Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the final part of Let's Play Enemy Zero. To recap what's been going on up to now, everyone's dead. Everyone's dead and Lars a robot, and we are trying to get out of this spaceship. We're trying to get to the escape pod so we can fly out. We're, we're not even going to try to save the Aki. Uh, it's a lost cause. We're not going to try to get rid of these enemies. We're just getting out of here as fast as we can. And fortunately for Lara, she was able to find the key that George was working on to open up the fall tower, which is where the escape ship is. Uh, so I guess let's hear Lara's thoughts on what's going on right now. Voice record number 020, Laura Lewis. I am heading towards the fall tower in order to escape from this ship via the mini spacecraft. Yeah, Laura's done. She's just done with all this. You know, it, forget about any anything that's been happening up to now. Forget about David. Forget about his the good times with him. We're just done, and we're getting off this ship. Even we have to do it alone. Well, no, that's not right, is it? We're not actually alone. Are we, Mercus? No. We'll never be alone, as long as you're with us. Even if everyone has forgotten about Mercus, we never will. So I hope Mercus can wish us some luck, because we're about to go into the hardest part of the game. Most of the game has been a combination of FMV rooms and polygonal action sequences. Disc 3, The Fall Tower, is mostly action sequences. The problem with that is that you can only save in FMV rooms. That means for the majority of this disc, we will not be able to save our game. And that's why most people, when they try to finish the game, this is where they're going to have most of their problems. They're going to have a lot of trouble actually making it through the Fall Tower. This is the hardest part of the game, so let's get started. Alright, we find ourselves in a polygonal maze, and we can hear an enemy roaring and beeping. We're gonna hug the left wall, and hopefully that'll take us away from it. Yeah, it's slowing down. Now the thing is, this is a large maze that covers multiple floors, and there really aren't any landmarks. All of the hallways are pretty samey, which makes this real difficult to actually get through when you don't know where to go. If you've gone through these mazes over and over and over, eventually you may figure out the best way to get through them. Like, for example, on the first floor, we do want to hug the left wall, and that's going to be the fastest and safest way to get to the end of this. Uh, elevator, there it is. Okay, we made it through the first floor without running into an enemy, so we didn't have to waste a shot. That's something else I should mention. We have a gun, but we have to make it through these mazes without using all of our ammo. Because there are no recharging stations here. Okay, we want to hug the right wall. Oh, something... something here? Not sure, not sure, not sure. I think we're walking away. Okay, yes, it's slowing down. Okay. So we have a gun, it's charged, but if I have to use it a bunch of times, it will run out of ammo. Okay, elevator going down to the third floor, and uh, if that happens, I cannot recharge it until I get to a certain room. Okay, on the third floor, we actually do not want to hug the walls. We want to work our way straight up. Anything here? Okay, no, I think it's clear in front of us. I think. Okay, once we're here, we want to turn to the left and go down this hallway. And I think there's nothing in front of us. There's, yep, nothing in front of us. We're home clear. Okay, that actually went as well as it possibly could have. We didn't run into any enemies. I didn't have to shoot anything. And I was able to just pretty much run through it. So that can go worse. Um, it, we can, of course, run into the enemies. We can use shots. And if we run out of ammo, well, we have no more shots, and uh, that can be a problem. Let's hear what Laura thinks about how well we did th uh, right there. Voice record number 021, Laura Lewis. I have successfully arrived at the fall tower. I will now proceed towards the mini spacecraft. Yeah, Laura, not much emotion going on, but you can't really blame her considering what she's been through. She's had a rough day. 
And I mean, who knows what her future holds, even if she gets off the Aki. Well, let's head in here. We find ourselves in some kind of locker room. We could save here if we wanted, but, uh, nah, let's try our luck. Uh, sweet memories of David, most of which are probably fake, created by George. That must be frustrating to not know which of your memories are real and which are fake, but I can tell you what's real. This is what's real. Now we've gotten David's gun. You might wonder why we need it, because we had Kimberly's gun, but David's gun is the best one, because this has unlimited ammo. And we're gonna need it, because we're heading into the next part of the Fall Tower, and we are needing to shoot this a lot. A lot. As we enter this area, it's a different type of hallway that we've seen, and that's a different type of enemy that we've seen before. That was a visible enemy. That was a larva. The enemy, in its larvae form, is not invisible and hasn't developed that yet. But you know what? They can kill you all the same. They touch you, you die in one hit, just like the grown-ups. Now, you might think they might not be as dangerous because they're visible. It's not the case. They are very dangerous. The reason is... The reason is because when you hear them crawl around and scream... Oh, there's the elevator. When you hear that happening, you can't tell where it's coming from. The sound effect is in mono. Unlike the beeping, we cannot tell which direction those larvae are coming from. So we can see them, and we can hear them, but we can't tell where they're coming from just based on sound, and that's a problem. So I think the larvae are actually more dangerous than the adult enemies because of that. The game's been training me Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, there was something right there, but we ran away. And there's an elevator right here. Nothing between us and it. Alright, so that was close, but we made it off of the second floor, down to the third floor. And now... We're gonna hug the left wall again. I'm just gonna shoot around the corners. Yep. Because I have unlimited ammo. I don't need to worry about that. You may notice I'm not charging up the gun. I'm just doing this. Because fortunately those uncharged shots can kill the larvae. I think I, I still do have to charge up the gun to shoot the adults though. Where is it? You hear that? You can't tell which, which direction it's coming from. Oh, I think that there it is. All right, third elevator, going down. All right, 
this place is overgrown with uh, alien life, I guess? I guess they're making a nest down here. Something is pretty close. Alright, one down, but we can still hear some beeping. No, it's fading away. It's fading away. But yeah, we can see that much like a certain other type of alien that we know of, the enemies are changing the environment of the ship to fit their needs to make a nest. So this indicates we're going down deeper into where the heart of the enemies are. Elevator straight ahead. Alright, we're just making our way through this fall tower. And into the vents we go. What will we find here? Okay, this is something different. It's a large, wide open room. We don't see that often in this game. And we can hear a larva crawling around. Though I can't see it. Oh, there's one. Any others? Because, you know, they can crawl into the vents. So it might be a good idea to make sure there's nothing here before we go in. All right, we're heading towards some adults. They're pretty close. Yeah, really close. Is it in here? Yes, it was in here. All right, I hear a baby, hear an adult. There's a baby. Still looking around a little bit just to make sure that a larva doesn't crawl up behind me. There's one. Was a bit of a that was a bit of a problem part right there. Wasn't sure if I was going to make that. All right, don't see any larva. Wherever that one was, it was not in front of me. Alright, I think that's everything in this room. Now let's see. Kinda lost track on which one I came in through. Let's see, was it this? I don't hear anything from that direction. So let me find another one. Uh, I'm not sure now which one I came in from. We'll try this and see where it goes. Alright, no, that's a door. This is the way we need to go.
So it does look like there was a literal heart that I guess the enemies were coming from. Maybe that's what births the larvae? So you found out. I'm one of the military personnel who commissioned George's company to carry out this plan. To capture and transport the enemy monsters back to Earth for utilization as biological weapons. Parker was also one of us. I never meant to deceive you. When Parker and I got married, you were as happy as if you were the one getting married. I thank you for that. You've always been such a good friend. If you feel the same way, maybe you can believe what I'm saying. You know, Laura, you were in love with David, weren't you? Isn't that proof enough that you actually are human? You might not understand now, but someday... I'm sure you'll realize how much he loved you. And that day... will be your start as a human. I'm not going. The only place for me is with Parker. I know you can understand. Here. This is David's memory chip. Take it back with you. I gotta go. Parker's waiting. Hurry! Get out of here! Attention, this ship will be entering self-destruction mode. Please evacuate immediately. Well, alright, I mean, Kimberly maybe could have asked us before turning on the self-destruct mode, but uh, she said to just get out of here, so we can do that, right? No, apparently we can't do that. I guess, uh, well, I guess let's listen to what's going through Laura's mind right now. Voice record number 022, Laura Lewis. I have arrived at the docking port of the mini spacecraft. As I was about to make my escape, Kimberly appeared. I can now confirm that Kimberly is still alive. However, almost immediately, I again lost sight of Kimberly. I will now proceed to search for her. I mean, Kim really said we could just leave, but I guess we're not. I guess we're looking for Kim. And, uh, we thought- we might have thought that we were out of danger. No, we are not. No, even though we have killed the enemy heart. We are not out of danger yet. There's pings all around us. As we have to work our way through this maze. To try to get out the other side. I have to take this slowly, I think. Alright, so we found that Kim had somehow survived the enemy attack. And, uh, she helped us out. She got rid of that larva in our neck. 
Just cut it right out. That seems like the obvious thing to do, right? So I guess we do owe her. But what are we going to do if Kimberly doesn't want to leave? It's not like we can make her leave. There's so many pings all around us right now. Oh wait, they're fading away. Okay, did we make it? Okay, good. If we were to go forward, we would be in a familiar area. We're back in the Winter Tower, where, where we originally came from. We don't want to go that way, though. We want to head down. Why down? Because if you remember, Parker's quarters was in the basement of the Winter Tower, and Kimberly said that her, her place was by Parker's side. So it only follows that she was going back to Parker's quarters. So let's head back there ourselves, and see if we can reach Kimberly in time before this ship explodes, and convince her to come back with us, because, you know... There's not much reason for her to stay here. I mean, I guess she blames herself for what's going on. Because she was part of uh, the military group who commissioned the Vex Corporation to go on this mission. So it is partially her fault, but, I mean, there's no reason to just stay here on the ship. There are so many things, I can barely tell. Okay, that's one ping down. Second ping down. All pings down. Okay. Now, let me focus on actually finding Parker's room. Kind of lost track of that while I was going after the pings. I mean, maybe when we maybe when we get to Parker's room, we can read some poetry to Kim. That always brightened up her day before. Reminisce about, you know, the, the good time. Well, she said, oh, I'm at the exit. Okay, let me just hug the left wall again. She said that Laura had gone to uh, her and Parker's wedding. So, I mean, at least that's a real memory. Laura knows that that was not created by George. That's something she can hold on to. Something that she knows actually happened and was not just created. I mean, we, we are, we can, we are, can, our personalities are made up from our memories. That's what gives us meaning. So well, as long as we, there's something that we can hold on to as being real, then maybe it gives us a reason to keep on going. Let's talk to Kim about that.
and we can see that the thing that Kimberly had pulled up when she came here was a chat log between her and Parker talking about as they were having difficulties getting to sleep on board the ship. Thinking about what they were going to do after the assignment was over and how were they, they were going to spend their lives together. And then, of course, there is the self-destruct. Kimberly did turn that on. That's, that's true. Let's listen to Laura's thoughts at the moment. Voice record number 023. Laura Lewis. I have confirmed Kimberly's death upon discovering her corpse in Parker's quarters. I am now heading back to the dock in order to escape via the mini spacecraft. Yep. Laura has now confirmed that everyone is dead except her. So... No one else to save, no one else to go after. The only one left for Laura to think about now is herself. Time to go back to the Fall Tower, time to get back to that ship, and time to evacuate the Aki for good. I still think Kimberly could have mentioned that she was going to turn the self-destruct system on. I mean, I know she wants to kill all the enemies. But maybe she could have waited until Laura left. Also, another thing I'm not sure about is apparently the Winter Tower is connected to the Fall Tower? Because we just took the elevator up from the Winter Tower and now we're back here. But thinking about how the Aki looks on the outside, I'm not sure how they're connected. By the way, this is the last area that you have if you want to save. This would be the last place you could do it. But, as for us, let's keep on trucking forward. Alright, we're back in this final maze. Speaking to you on the ship's intercom system from inside George's computer. I feel alive again. Ah, I'm alive. You can relax. I'm going to safely guide you out of here. I told you, didn't I? that you can depend on me. Okay. Let's go. Attention. Please evacuate immediately. This ship will self-destruct in three minutes. Okay, we only have three minutes left, and you saw that our ear device, it's shorted out. We have no way of knowing where the enemies are. Forward. But David, is who is inside George's computer, is going to direct us out of here. It's he can see where the egg... Take it easy. Now we're taking it easy, Dave. Go right. Forward. 
The enemy is near. All right, so when he says that, do not try to even shoot them, because for some reason we will not be able to do that. We just have to go back. Go right. And take another way. The enemy is near. To the left. It's a good thing we left Dave in George's computer, I guess. Go right.
Voice record number 024, Laura Lewis. I have successfully escaped from the spacecraft, the Aki, via the mini spacecraft. Of the seven initial crew members, six, Parker, Marcus, Ronnie, George, Kimberly, and David are confirmed dead. Only one, me, Laura Lewis, has survived. I'm now entering hypersleep for the voyage back to Earth. Hey, I wonder if it's sunny on Earth today.
Voice record number 025, Laura Lewis. I have made a confirmed sighting of the Earth's blue sky. And that's it for Laura's sci-fi adventure, as she and David, in chip form, make it back to Earth. As for what happens to them when they get back, who can say? David's just kind of stuck in the ship right now, unless they could get the Vex Corporation to build another body. Or maybe they'll just hang out in the miniship and fly around the world, going on adventures, like a future version of Knight Rider. I kind of like to believe that's what happens. But even though we don't know what happens to Lara when she gets back to Earth, we do know that we've now seen all of the games that Lara has appeared in. Unfortunately, there were no more roles for the digital actress. Enemy Zero, like the other Lara games, was an early attempt at making a cinematic video game. And, also like the other Lara games, time hasn't really been kind to it. The CG does show its age as does the video compression, and the controls in the first-person shooter segments are a little awkward. Some of the cutscenes go on for too long, and the game does bite a little too much from Alien. Still, I did enjoy my time with Enemy Zero, and I can see how someone playing this when it first came out in 1996 would have been pretty impressed by it, much like how I was impressed with D when I first played it in 95, even though that game maybe has not aged so well either. But I'm glad that Kenji Ino was able to make video games, as regardless of how they've held up, they're a lot more interesting to me than most games. But you know, we actually haven't seen all of the things there are to see in Enemy Zero yet, so let's take a look at some clips that we didn't encounter in the playthrough. This first one is a bonus clip that you see when you beat the game on hard. So we actually get a good look at what the enemies look like, instead of just the quick glances that we've gotten throughout the game. This next clip is when you're killed by a larva. See, they just kill you the same way the enemies do. Now, for this next clip, you may remember that as we were in the final maze of the game, a voice announced that the ship was going to explode in three minutes. That was an actual time limit. And if we hang around, instead of getting to the exit, the ship will explode... like this. Of course, the time limit is much longer than we need to escape, so you're never going to see that unless you do it deliberately. Now, next up, I mentioned back at the beginning of the LP that the game has voice tracks in French and German. Here's a little montage of those voice tracks to get an idea of what the VA sounded like. Laura, hörst du mich? Hier spricht Captain Ronnie. Wahrscheinlich findest du alles etwas verwirrend im Moment, weil du aus dem Hyperschlaf herausgerissen wurdest. Laura. Ich bin froh, dass es dir gut geht. Du hast also auch keine genaue Erinnerung mehr. Ich wette, das ist, weil wir aus dem Hyperschlaf rausgerissen wurden. Enregistrement de voix numéro 013, Laura Lewis. Marcus est mort, tué par un organisme semblable à celui qui a tué Parker. J'ai identifié son corps. Il semble y avoir plusieurs organismes du même type à bord de ce vaisseau. Laura. 
dein Haar ist ganz zerzaust. Pas bon. Pas bon du tout. Même si je retourne à la compagnie, ma promotion est en jeu avec des dégâts pareils. Das Militär hat Georges Firma beauftragt, diesen Plan durchzuführen, die Monster des Feindes zu fangen und zur Erde zurückzubringen, um sie als biologische Waffen benutzen zu können. Hey, ähm, du erinnerst dich also doch noch an mich. Und ich dachte, dass du kaltschnäuzig so tun würdest, als ob du mich nicht kennst. Weißt du eigentlich, dass du mich schon auf der Erde kaum mal angerufen hast? Laura, est-ce que vous m'entendez C'est le capitaine Ronnie. J'imagine que tout est un peu confus en ce moment, depuis que vous avez été sorti de l'hypersommeil. Il semble que quelque chose se passe sur le vaisseau. Je veux en discuter avec vous tout de suite. Alors appelez-moi par vidéophone. David, tu as ses pflichten schon erfüllt et est gegangen. Sag moi, Laura, wie fühlst du ich meine, wie denkst du über David? Alle sagen, dass ihr ganz besondere Gefühle füreinander... Vergiss es. Falls wir es schaffen zu überleben, werde ich die Einzelheiten schon noch erfahren. Alors c'est toi! Tu l'as tué, n'est-ce pas? <lacht> Où? Où? Où es-tu? Parker? Oh bitte, Parker! Ich hatte gerade einen Traum. Ich erzähle dir alles darüber, sobald wir die Erde erreicht haben. Oh mein Gott! Qu'est-ce que t'as vu? Le fichier sur David? Je ne sais rien du tout. Je ne suis qu'un. Écoute, tu ne penses pas que c'était impoli de fouiller dans les affaires d'un autre sans sa permission? Je ne suis pas obligé de t'expliquer quoi que ce soit. Stimmenaufnahme Nummer 01E, Laura Lewis. Jetzt ist es klar, dass ich auch ein Androide bin. Dazu kommt noch, dass ich in meinen Nacken etwas Merkwürdiges entdeckt habe. Ich glaube, es ist eine Wunde, die ich mir zugezogen habe, als ich dem Feind gegenüberstand. Dis-moi, Laura, quand il faut descendre les nuits au combat, je sais ce qu'il faut faire. Dis-moi, tu sais quel est le truc le plus important? C'est de fixer ton ennemi droit dans les yeux et ne jamais, jamais regarder ailleurs. C'est comme s'occuper d'un bébé, c'est vrai. Es geht dabei um dich und mich. Ich erzähl's dir, wenn ich wieder da bin. Alles wird gut. Je suis une machine. Je ne peux pas y croire. Non, non. Mais pourquoi est-ce tellement difficile de te dire adieu Je déteste vraiment la pluie. Bois de la vodka. Je suis coléreux. Toujours en retard. Tu veux dire que cette personne-là, c'est une machine Laura, tu sais pourquoi je ne peux pas supporter de te quitter Je, je t'aime. Comment est-ce que ça peut arriver Laura, je me demande s'il fait beau sur Terre aujourd'hui. French David is a big upgrade over English David. But now, here we are, back on disc zero, because there's still something here that we haven't seen either. There's an option here for warp staff. So let's hit that and get a look at the people who worked on Enemy Zero.
And that, I believe, is that. That's everything that Enemy Zero has to show us. I hope that you've enjoyed going through the game with me, as well as looking at some of the other games that Kenji Ino had made throughout his career. Ino did intend to continue making video games on modern platforms, however, he unfortunately passed away on February 20th, 2013, at the age of 42, due to heart failure brought on by high blood pressure. At the time of Eno's death, he was designing a new game called Kakazoon. The people who knew Eno and worked with him decided to continue this project and make Eno's final game design into a reality. In October 2013, people who had worked at Warp and From Yellow to Orange formed a new company, Warp 2, and development of the game was underway. From what can be seen of Kakazoon, the game seems to be highly experimental, even for Eno. The setting is an alien world, and the gameplay seems to have something to do with math and rhythm. But even after reading the rundown of the game, I'm not positive on exactly what this game is. There have been two crowdfunding campaigns for Kakazoon. The first one was on a Japanese site called Motion Gallery, which reached its goal of 5 million yen. This one was for the alpha version, which apparently backers were able to play during August of 2014. The second campaign was on Indiegogo. This one was for the beta version and was targeted to the West. Unfortunately, this one fell far short of reaching its goal of $100,000. So, what does the Indiegogo failure mean for Kakazoon? Does this mean the end of the project, or is there still hope that we'll see the game someday? Well, in an interview done by Automaton.am, James Milky, the former editor-in-chief of Electronic Gaming Monthly, and a friend of Kenji Ino, stated that development of Kakazoon will go on, just slower than it would have been otherwise. Also, the YouTube channel for Kakazoon posted a video just last month of... something? Is this gameplay? I'm not sure. So, but it does seem that even though the Kakazoon project has had funding difficulties, work continues to be done on the game. Perhaps there will still be one more Kenji Ino adventure to go on, after all. But for now, it's time to say goodbye to Enemy Zero, to Lara, and to Kenji Ino's games. This has been Let's Play Enemy Zero. I hope you've enjoyed it.